Barolo is the icon of the region, what we are known for, especially our cellar, which is the home to the very first Barolo wine. Barolo is known still today as the king of wine and wine of kings. Great wine. Better prices. Delivered right to your door. SaratogaWine.com This is Charles Kirkwood, Director of Wine and Spirits from SaratogaWine.com, and today I'm honored to be joined by Valentina Abona from Marchesa de Barolo. Valentina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. So if you could just give us a, a little bit of background on uh, Marchese de Barolo as well as yourself. I'm uh, together with my brother Davide, representing the sixth generation of our family involved in this business. And our family ma owns and manages actually the most historical winery in the region of Barolo. The barrels that you see here in my uh, just at my back uh, date back to the 1800s and were the very first ones that ever used for making Barolo wine back in the days when Barolo was born as the wine that we know nowadays. Barolo was born in, the, in these same cellars, and I'm very proud to say that it was born because of love, because of love for our region, because of a love story between two people, the last Marquis of Barolo and his wife, Juliette Colbert, who he married back in 1806 mm -hmm. in France, uh, because Barolo, of course, was not yet in uh, uh, in Italy. Italy did not exist as a country of its own. Or we're still talking about the reign of Savoy at the time. So many things have changed, but the passion um, for fine wine, of course, is what characterized then our tradition and, and what the region does uh, since then to nowadays. That's an amazing story. Just to give you an idea, until the 1700s in the region here, wine was actually the result of a um, non uh, fought through process. Because, of course, uh, uh, every um, farm lived on different cultivation. Grapes were just one of them that was actually happening by, um, like, accidentally. So instead of throwing away grapes that people could not eat, they had to do something with them. So a juice was made in order to give energy, mineral salts, uh, and uh, sugars um, for people working in the fields of the other cultivation. The very first winery, in fact, was created underground where temperatures were more stable compared to the open air, where fermentation process used to take place before, just under porches. And uh, because of the fact that there was no way of controlling uh, temperature, fermentation eventually stopped with the first um, colds in late autumn and uh, in winter time for then restarting again after bottling in spring. So even the wine that uh, your former president, Thomas Jefferson, tasted in the 1700s when he used to visit Piedmont uh, um, was, of course, very different from the wine that we do make today. He used to describe it in his diaries as sweet as a Madeira, sparkling as a champagne, yet austere as a Bordeaux. Back when Thomas Jefferson tasted, was it, was it still Nebbiolo or, or do you know? It was Nebbiolo. He used to describe it as Nebbiolo. And of course, Nebbiolo is the native varietal that has characterized our fields since uh, back in the days. It was just not managed as we do today. Previous mistakes that were made, we are able to deal with Nebbiolo uh, in all of the different expressions and forms uh, that, it can, uh, that it can have. So from Barbaresco, we're able to make a wine which is a little fresher, and uh, with uh, some lighter tannins from Barolo, we are able to strengthen those tannins and show the power that the region can offer in a, um, in a very elegant way. From Roero, we have even greater expressions of freshness and uh, delicacy. So according to where we are, we are able to give name and to give a uh, identity to mm -hmm. this grape and the wine that then follows. Overall, how would you uh, compare uh, Marchese de Barolo's style um, compared to other other estates in Barolo? 
Well, of course, the long history that distinguishes our winery is uh, um, an element which is always very much present, even when tasting our wines. We can see this from the labels of our most classic Barolos, like our Barolo Tradizione or the Barolo del Comune di Barolo. But together with that, in these many years and different generations that followed one the other, we did have the chance and the, uh, um, I think, open mind to uh, explore and put together with tradition innovation. So we are constantly innovating our tradition, not to change what it was, but to improve it and to clean up better compared to what happened centuries ago. So I would say that our style is a nice reflection of these two elements, uh, what is contemporary and uh, um, the history, our, the tradition that distinguishes us. In terms of uh, vinification and the aging of our wine, you can see from the picture, of course, uh, uh, large barrels are a key element uh, in delivering a very traditional taste. Together with those, we also use uh, some smaller barrels like tonno or just a little bit larger than that than those. Uh, and if necessary, even barrique. So mm -hmm. we don't preclude ourselves uh, in testing and uh, trying in order to always become uh, more loyal to what the expression of the terroir is. So what drives our production is for sure the origin of the grapes. So the varietal and of course the land in which they're grown. The beauty about Barolo, and you know this very well, is the great diversity that we find in our region. Going back maybe 20 years, can you give us some some highlights on, on vintages you're you're particularly proud of from Marchese de Barolo? Well, it's uh, very difficult to say because my family uh, bought the state uh, that was uh, left from the Marquises of Barolo after passing away with no hair to a charity organization back in 1929. So since 1929 onwards, there is our family's uh, signature onto all of the bottles. So of course, there is quite a range to pick from and it's difficult to narrow it down to just a few uh, numbers or a few mm -hmm. uh, vintages. Um, what I always find very emotional when tasting um, between different vintages is, however, to see like a sort of fil rouge, like a, a line, a consistency, that even though um, the improvements that we try to do, the different tools that we use, the different technologies that time by time assist us into our work, there is always a connection between what it was and what it is today. So, when it comes to just the quality of a vintage, it's never just the vintage itself that is uh, uh, dictating the taste, but it's also the way that we were able to work on it. Uh, so to show uh, the best that we could from every single situation. Vintages, which are very dear to me, probably because of the difficulties that um, we had in those years, were years like 2003, which was for some reason similar to 2022, which we are living right now, um, it was a very warm vintage and very dry, but still we have expressions of Barolo, which even today are very um, rich in their taste and uh, very authentic. Um, other vintages like uh, uh, 2012 on the other side uh, that was super classic is a vintage that is also very dear to me because of the reflection of uh, the tradition that was here. So for different reasons, I could say that there are a number of mm -hmm. uh, every vintage could be my favorite. Of course. So, <laughs> so it's, it's very, very challenging. If you go over uh, current releases of what's available, um, starting with Barolo. Today, um, we are showing 2016 as our current vintage on our single vineyards and on our Barolo del Comune di Barolo, um, which is a little bit behind what is the um, current release according to the disciplinar, but is our personal choice to keep it 
um, to keep our wines in the cellar for a couple extra years uh, because our most important single vineyards, the one that we decide to show as single ones, come from the single town of Barolo. Barolo as a village is very central in the winemaking area and is characterized by a very unique position in terms of altitude. We are lower than the other villages. Therefore, there is a concentration in terms of uh, notes and flavors and the deepness of these notes and flavors because of this lower position and the special climate that here is created because of this little valley in which we sit. On the other side, Barolo village is also characterized by very different soil types because it's exactly where uh, the two different plates of soil that ideally can identify the two main sub-regions of Barolo cross one with the other. So we find very different uh, um, opportunities of expression. Because of these two elements combining, we feel like our wines need longer time in the cellar. So 2016 is what we are showing right now when it comes to our um, Barolo most traditional one. We are just, we just launched in Italy the 2017. So it will be coming to the States uh, um, okay. shortly. Sure. So what, what would, how would you describe what we should expect in differences between 16 that's available stateside now and, and 17, which should be coming. So 2016 was a very classic year. It is considered lately as one of the most exciting ones. So every Barolo um, aficionado, every Barolo lover is really looking forward to for 2016. And I think that every single bottle I tasted so far is a confirmation of the beauty and uh, the, um, the, the quality of that uh, specific vintage. It is fresh uh, with some very crisp uh, um, uh, fruit notes uh, on the nose uh, and some beautiful, delicate tannins uh, and uh, great minerality on the palate. 2017 on the other side, because it was a um, warmer and drier year, has a little bit more uh, heat in it. So it is that Barolo, which in my opinion gives you an opportunity of becoming more familiar with the appellation itself is a very gentle um, vintage. So it does allow you to have a sort of preview of what in vintages like 2017, 16, for example, you should wait on a couple extra years in order to actually see. Probably the most famous wine that um, you all make is, is the Kanubi. Can you, can you get into... Uh, what makes that crew unique and, and special? So, of course, Canubi is the most famous uh, Barolo overall. It's this beautiful vineyard uh, right in the center of the production area in the heart of Barolo town. And it's also the most uh, close to town um, historical vineyard, which we always had access to as producers. What makes Canubi so iconic is besides the position, so the fact that historically it was a easy to go vineyard, is the fact that it is always a very beautiful expression of harmony because Canubi is that hill in which rocks, so clay, limestone, and very rich element that gives structure to the wines meet with a uh, very soft sand and limo that offers freshness. So it's always a very balanced expression of wine if grapes were grown on um, on Canubi. Um, on the other side, the Canubi is also, it's quite a long hill and we are uh, different producers owning properties there. So it's also a name that people became more familiar with because it's many that actually offer it. So you can easily make a comparison between one Canubi and the other and uh, go even more into deep into the uh, intimacy of that specific crew. I always find, however, exciting to taste what is next to it because once you make Kanubi your benchmark then you can compare and find uh, um, the other uh, very special expressions of what Barolo is. The old surface of Barolo counts uh, 2,000 um, hectares which translates into 5,000 acres 
more or less. And this area, which is very tiny, is split into 170 different single venues. Canoob is just one of them. And there is not a ranking in terms of quality. They all stay at the same level. So imagine what an opportunity of discover what Barolo is through all of these uh, um, different single vineyards. The most popular selections from uh, your portfolio are actually your Barberas. Uh, can you give us a brief overview on the lineup? This really makes me proud because, of course, Barolo is an easy wine to be proud of. Uh, because it's the icon of the region, what we are known for, especially our cellar, which is the home to the very first uh, Barolo wine. I, I will just uh, say this before going on Barbera, but Barolo is known still today as the king of wine and wine of kings, actually because of Marquise Juliette Colbert, the founder of our winery. Because when she was able to make a wine that became so iconic for the region, even the king of Savoy was um, curious to taste it. So she sent 325 barrel all the way from Barolo to Turin, which was the capital at the time of the region. And then some years later of Italy, when Italy was unified as a country under that family's uh, monarchy. The king loved it so much that wanted to drink it on a daily basis with the exception of the 40 days of Lent, because Marquis Juliette was very Catholic, so counted off those 40 days. So only 325 barrels, but enough, of course, to satisfy the king's needs. So it is easy for some reason to be proud of Barolo. To know that Barbera is the most popular wine for you among your selection makes us uh, even prouder because Barbera has always been considered in our tradition as a everyday, simple, given for granted wine that is nothing like, I mean, it isn't wine which you can drink on a daily basis, but is very far away from uh, giving it for granted, is a conversing, is an everyday confirmation of the choice that you, uh, that you make. Barbera is, of course, a grape which is more um, easy to manage. It doesn't need that a long time aging that a Nebbiolo needs. Um, it's distinguished by a very high acidity, which makes it super versatile when it comes to food pairing and uh, very little tannins. Mm -hmm. So it's more understandable for people that are approaching the wine world, especially the old wine world. Um, and our Barberas come from different places. Our Barbera del Monferrato, Maraia, which is our little rascal in the family, Maraia translates exactly into that, into little rascal, is a Barbera that is grown on the very sandy and delicate soils of um, uh, Monferrato. So we are more east uh, than, uh, than Barolo. Uh, we are looking about a very different land that offers uh, freshness, easiness, uh, and um, um, my immediate pleasure when tasting it. So that's why we named the little, little Rascal, is the little one in our family that always gives us some very nice um, satisfactions. And it did become one of the most popular wine um, for us. On the other side, we have our Barbera d'Alba, Rouvay, which is definitely more serious. This is a Barbera d'Alba made with grapes coming from different vineyards within the Alba Appellation. We are just a little bit more west, more inland, closer to the mountains. And here we find more rocky soil. Plus we blend in our Rouvé 15% of Nebbiolo. Mm. To highlight the difference and to give even more um, seriousness to this wine. So to um, give it some um, tannins, to make it drier and a little bit more funky and interesting to pair with strong flavors. So two very, two very different souls for the same grapes that grows in different uh, places. Monferrato, easiness, and Alba, seriousness, highlighted by the Nebbiolo. We have a third, Barbera, which I won't place necessarily third in order. It's just the way I'm uh, describing them that actually comes from a single vineyard right in Barolo. That's how much we believe in this varietal. In uh, 1980, when my mom and dad got married, uh, they decided to take away some of the Nebbiolo from the town of Barolo. So they basically gave up 
to some of their Barbera production, so to plant Barbera and give a chance to Barbera to show his true colors from one of the most uh, uh, beautiful vineyards within the Barola appellation. The vineyard is Payagallo. It's right in front of our home, the first one that you see when you enter the city center. City center. Barola is so tiny that it's all city center. But basically, when you really enter the heart of the village, Payagallo is the first vineyard that stands up in front of you and is uh, known for the very rocky soil. So is an expression of Barbera, which needs uh, just uh, um, about the same time that a Barolo should need. So it always comes out later from the cellar. There is an, a nice tension in terms of refining in wood. We do use some barrique on that one as well. And there's a Barbera full of flash, full of uh, big muscles uh, that is able to deliver in a more easy way than a Barolo all what Barolo land is known for, power, elegance, uh, finesse, but structure at the same time. What are the biggest challenges you foresee both for Marchese de Barolo as well as Barolo in general? Well, I would say that um, if I read that this is the uh, um, uh, opposite of warm, this is the coolest uh, summertime, which we should expect for the next 10 years. This, of course, is very scary as a human being, but of course, as a vitna. So um, I think that uh, what my my expectations, my, uh, my hopes uh, for the future is that we're able to find uh, a, a balance and a way to react to this situation also in terms of community. So nowadays we do have some very strict uh, laws and disciplinars, which has always allowed us to um, to make the best uh, out of our region. But perhaps if the situation, if the starting point is changing so much, we probably need to update those as well. So my uh, my trust is within the community coming to some uh, uh, decisions which we can all benefit from. I'm very excited about this new wave of uh, uh, producers which meet, uh, which uh, discuss one with the other to always find some great solutions. Uh, I see my, my brothers constantly in, uh, in touch with uh, other producers sharing uh, techniques and uh, tests uh, that they did on the vineyards, uh, so to always do better for ourselves, but of course uh, for the whole region and the in our um, overall production. At okay. the end, uh, uh, our land, uh, our vineyards is what we live for. So it's better we preserve it all together as a community in the best way. Do you have any tips for uh, folks visiting Barolo? Um, can people openly visit or do they need an appointment? Well, we believe a lot in hospitality. My mom, Anna, decided to open the winery for people to visit already in the, um, uh, in the 80s. And in 1925, she opened a restaurant just above the cellar where to pair our wine with local food. So to give a chance to our wine to show their true colors with more time at disposal, of course, but also by playing with the different pairings that you could think of. Because at the end, when we taste a glass of wine, if we just taste it alone, alone is like a, a portion of the experience which you can get. If you allow it the time, if you allow it the challenges that food creates with it, then of course you have a more complete experience. So we always trusted in showing right here why our wines are different from the wines that can be made elsewhere once you're uh, in the land and you touch and you see and you smell what the region is about and you realize how the sun hits in different points in different ways then is when you really get to understand and appreciate the differences that you find in your glasses so um for sure, we encourage, um, we encourage, I'm sorry, um, visitors uh, to come here. Um, of course, uh, if we're able to have some uh, schedule 
is uh, is better so that we can always be uh, prepared at our disposal. But we are very much organized in uh, in that sense. So I hope that next time it won't be just through a video, but it will be physically together in Varolo with a nice glass of wine, looking at our vineyards and uh, uh, tasting them at the same time. Uh, one of my favorite questions uh, to ask is, what advice would you have for someone that would be interested in, you know, getting into the wine industry, but also, um, you know, running a winery as well? The most important tip is to follow your um, your guts. Is mm -hmm. this right? Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, to um, always keep an eye on what has been done prior to that specific moment because we learn from experiences so we learn by tasting by testing tasting in our case is right as well by failing and getting back into our feet so if uh, in this region there's always been a, a great uh, um uh, constant tradition is because things have worked well so i would advise to preserve uh, that tradition, always keeping an eye on what the opportunities that nowadays time offer us in terms of tools, in terms of technologies, in terms of uh, uh, experimentations, which you could carry out both in the vineyards and in the cellar. And of course, taste, 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 because wine changes constantly. It changes in your glass. It changes in the bottle. It changes because of the different land in which is... Uh, is born. So I would advise to never be just on your own, but to be in this very beautiful community of winemakers and uh, continuing to exchange opinions. Well, this has been great. I really appreciate it. Me too. Thank you for giving me a chance to speaking about what we do in our very tiny village. Remember, but all of the only 600 people, but yet Talk about it every single day, more times a day because of because of the wine. And this is just so beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this has been a fascinating exploration into uh, Marchese di Barolo as well as Barolo and the Piedmont. All of these selections and more are available at saratogawine.com. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>